Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. I'm doing something a little different with the lights and also if you hear a little more of an echo than you normally do it's because we are rearranging things here in the studio or office or shed, whatever you want to call it. Um, today's topic of Top 5 Friday is the much contended worst of the year list. Um, I've been seeing a lot of stuff of people, especially on Twitter, saying, it was the point of a worst of list? Um, my, my whole thought on it is, it's all about solidarity. We talk about the stuff we like, we talk about the stuff we don't like, and if you're one of those people who trusts my opinion on something, whether or not to buy something or not, or whether to, well, yeah, whether or not to buy something, then this will help you in case you missed all of my... Uh, in case you missed these reviews, this is a nice condensed place where you can find books that I suggest no one buys. Um, you guys already know what three of them are going to be, but there's two of them on here that I couldn't even finish, and those will be at the top of the list. But right off the bat, we're going with, you knew it was coming, Marisha Pestle's Never World Wake. This book did not live up to... Not really the hype, it didn't live up to expectations, um, but on top of that, I've had a lot of time since finishing it to think, you know, was I too hard on it? Was it only because of my expectations that I liked it? But the more I think about it, the more, I, you know, the more it's obvious, nothing happens in this book. Every single time something is about to happen, everything starts over. Um, and that's the whole point of the book, really, is a Groundhog Day scenario. And this is the worst I have seen it done. Um, what was the one with Tom Cruise? Oblivion? Something like that. Uh, then there's actual Groundhog Day. There was even the, uh, uh, what's the Christopher Nolan short film, I think, that was like it that kept on starting over. Uh, Happy Death Day was a good movie based on that concept. This was not good. Next up, we have another uh, disappointment of mine. My goo gone's falling all over the place. Uh... Elevation, I mean, we know why this sucks. I've talked about this numerous times. I talked about it a lot more than I ever would want to or thought I would have. But it being released toward the end of the year means that it's on all different kinds of different lists. My top disappointments, um, top worst books of the year. Nothing about this book is good. Nothing. Uh, there's not a single line in here that I could quote. Usually I write down in the back when there's quotable lines. There's, there's nothing there. Alright, next up, one again recently that I did is Ezekiel Boone's The Mansion. This is god awful. If uh, I would never have finished this, honestly, never would have finished this if it hadn't have been from a major publisher that I trust. Um, Emily Bessler Books or Atria Publishing, um, I love just about everything they do. Uh, not so much here, man. This, not, actually, not at all here. <laughs> it's not, 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 not so much. Um, this was so bad. Uh, once again, nothing happened in it. You cannot give a premise like this and then have nothing happen for three quarters of the book. And when it's all, when your book's called The Mansion, and they don't even get to The Mansion until halfway through the book, until page 200 of a 400 page book, you got problems. Now, the next two things I'm going to be talking about, I don't have. Um, on hand because one of them I donated and the other one was simply a joke. Um, it wasn't really a joke, but people talked me into taking a bullet for the team and I couldn't even finish it. I'm going to try and put pictures, let's see here, like right about here of what I'm talking about. So right now we're talking about, oh, uh, it survived the night, seized the night? What does that say? I don't know. It's by an author. <laughs> I can't even be bothered to remember the name of the author right now. The number one thing I remember about this book is that it has jump scare. Um, <laughs> it, in case you don't know, a jump scare in a movie is when something jumps out at you, jumps out at the camera or whatever, and scares the audience. It never works in books, and this literally had a cat jump scare. The worst possible jump scare you can have in your movie is a cat jumping out. I mean, it's the oldest, oldest trick in the book, very cliched. Um, and this actually had a cat jumping out. Now, if this was a parody um, of overused tropes kind of thing, then, yeah, I'd be all for it. But on top of that, there was so much wrong with the main character who was supposedly in rehab uh, for drug addiction. Uh, she didn't act like an addict 
at all whatsoever. Um, and there's one part where she literally goes from seeing her disemboweled friend to kissing on her boyfriend or ex-boyfriend. It like two scenes away, and it's not like, oh my god, I'm so glad to see you. It's literally, oh my god, dead dead friend. Hey, boyfriend, I think is cute. Here, let's kiss. It, the book was terrible. Uh, I I couldn't I couldn't finish it, and it's definitely number two. Um, and the only reason number one is number one is because of who. <laughs> I wrote this down. <laughs> It says, the prez is missing. So, uh, <laughs> the worst book of the year, of course, is by James Patterson. The worst book of the year every year is by James Patterson. Um, but this one is especially bad because not only did is James Patterson's name on it, but Bill Clinton's name is on it. And neither one of them wrote the book. Um, it was written by a guy named David Ellis, who wrote the absolutely terrible book Invisible with uh, uh, James Patterson. You can check out my review of Invisible on Goodreads. It has one of the worst lines ever written in the opening page. It has one of the worst lines. Um, at least you don't have to get too far before you realize, holy crap, these guys are idiots. So The President is miss Missing is exactly what you would think it is if you got James Patterson and Bill Clinton together. You have a horn dog and a terrible uh, plotter get together and to write a story about the president uh, vanishing. And it's just as bad as you would think it is. The writing is terrible. There's a joke that goes ar that going around like Tumblr, Twitter, all that stuff about uh, male authors writing things like she bounced boobily down the stairs. There is almost word for word that exact kind of line in there. I think the woman is jogging out of the airport and her boobs are bouncing. <laughs> I can't, I, you can't make this stuff up. Um, but you can go check out my DNF review on Goodreads of The President is Missing. It was so, so bad. Even worse, um, it doesn't have the sh super short chapters that uh, James Patterson is known for, so you really have to push. I think I made it 14% into the book. You really have to force yourself to keep reading because it's not even the uh, the guarantee of a short chapter coming up. It's just page after page of terrible writing because David Ellis is one of the worst in the business. So definitely let me know so we can have solidarity down in the doobly-doo. Let me know your worst books of the year. If you have videos, link them down there in the doobly-doo. If they don't show up right away, it's probably because the spam filter catches them. So I will try and make a point of going over to spam and clearing that out every day and approving them. Um, so if you got videos, leave them down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Oh, also, if you're still here, if you like the new lighting, let me know. Bye-bye!